Well, it's a beautiful winter's morning. I'm out doing a bit of drop shotting today. It's a technique that I really enjoy doing, especially in the winter. And you can do it as a standalone technique, or if you're out doing a bit of jigging or a bit of crankbait fishing, the faster sort of retrieves, and that's not sort of working for you on that day, or you have a few bites, then drop shotting is the way to go. You can nail a lot of fish in a short space of time and have a great session. I'm gonna to talk to you about a little bit about how I do it, how I tie the rigs, what lures I like to use to keep those bites coming. So let's get straight into it. It's a very quick session today, hoping to try and get a few fish for you. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about how I tie the rig very quickly and my go-to sort of setup for drop shotting. Let's get straight into what we need. You've got drop and jig fluorocarbon. You've got my drop shot hooks. Um, you've got the selection of weights. So these are the brass, uh, the pencil sort of weights that we've got, or you've got the, the tungsten options there from Strike King. So first thing to do is I'm going to tie my drop and jig fluorocarbon to my main braided line. I use a back-to-back -back grinner knot. So basically I'm looping the braided main line, creating a loop that goes over the fluorocarbon. You create a loop, you've got the drop and jig running parallel to the loop of the braid and I'm going underneath so I'm trapping the fluorocarbon along with the braid and I just do I'm only doing a bit of light sort of drop shotting. I'm not going to do, you know, a million sort of loops around it. Probably go for about six, seven loops. And what I would do is just give that a little moist, moisten, and just pull the tag end of the braid. Not too tight at the minute, but just so it gets a bit of shape and just holds that fluorocarbon in place. And what I'll do is twist that round and repeat the same process, just pull, pull a bit more of the fluoro. Again, I'm just looping that back, trapping it with my thumb. So I've got a nice loop in the uh, fluorocarbon, run the braid parallel to it and just go underneath, repeat that. Same again on the other side, moisten it a bit and just pull just so it tightens up the, the fluoro. And this is now where you just sort of pull both together so they butt up against each other. And once you pull them all together, you'll feel that fluoro pinch. You've got a nice strong knot now. That's gonna secure your braid to your fluorocarbon. We trim the tag ends. So that's my fluorocarbon tied to my main line. Right now, time to put the hook through so with that you always want to make sure obviously your hook's going to face upwards because that's that, that's where your weight's going to go and that's where your braided main line is at the top of there so make sure you have that on the right way and i'm always going to sort of try and go you can either go through halfway make sure you've got enough tag end at the bottom so you can change alter the depth that you're fishing at uh, depending on where the fish are feeding or if you're trying to get over obstacles, weed and whatnot. So I normally go for about halfway through the length of the, uh, the fluoro. I'm going to double that over to basically just create a loop where your hook is in place. And it's simply a case of spinning your hook over both lines like this, I've got that done that once, pass it through again, and then pass it through one more time. So there basically if you can see you've created a you've created loops where the line's looped over itself on either both sides of the hook. Do it one more time just to be on the safe side. Make sure that's done. You want to moisten down and then edge it slowly. You see that hook Basically, it's, not, it's almost like a knot and it's not, so you're not really tying a knot as such. You're just trapping that line, pulling tight. Make sure that line is, you see that hook there. 
sits nice and proud, ready to catch fish. Now we come to attaching the weight. So you've got your hook there and you're attaching the weights at the, the bottom long sort of tag end that trails off the back of the hook. You go straight through, pinch that line and then just pull so you feel it sort of pinch tight there on the uh, top of your drop shot weight. So now, as the rain comes down, we're on the, uh, the business end of things and hooking and choosing the right lure and getting it on the end of your hook and hopefully catching a few fish. So I've got here a selection of some of my favorites. We've got the uh, selection of the new ultra UV floating creatures. Um, so you've got the swing ball, the funky worm, uh, the uh, crayfish and the shovel shad. Uh, seven centimeters of perfect size for drop shotting, certainly perfect for the stuff that I do. Uh, we've got the new Slick Finesse, again, fantastic, super supple, uh, brilliant movement on the tail end, the classic spiky shad. Again, a huge selection of colours available and sizes. Um, I just stick with the smaller, smaller sort of sizes to try and get a few bites. And the Mini Crawl, again, a fantastic option. Uh, obviously, there's loads more lures in, in the range as well that you can sort of try out. There is no harm in trying any lure that you haven't tried before, just try and get yourself a few bites, try something a bit different. Um, I'm just gonna go with something that I have a lot of confidence in at the minute, which is the swing ball. I'm basically just hooking the lure, just nicking it in the, the front end of the, the lure itself, just to give it the maximum amount of movement in the water. Now that's all rigged up, let's go and catch some fish. So when it comes to choosing the weights for drop shot fishing, um, it might seem a bit confusing, but to simplify it really just, I, I normally just tend to go with the lightest weight I can get away with. Most of my fishing is done on canals, maybe small rivers, uh, a couple of still waters now and again. But yeah, if you're fishing on a, on a river where you've got a bit of, you know, a bit of water pushing through, you, you're sort of battling against that current, then just up your weight. So basically you want to hold that lure in that position. So the more weight you add on to the bottom end of the rig the more it's going to keep that lure in place and hold it in the position in the kill zone for longer uh, that's the key thing to remember with uh, choosing the right weight for your uh, drop shot fishing so the drop shots fan is a fantastic um, technique to use for sort of closing work or where you're trying to work around structure so you've got you know whether it's moored boats or whether it's sort of jetties and things like that um, with dying weed you can get right into these little spots and just work that lure in a, in a particular spot and keep it there and that's the key thing for this kind of technique so you know something like just you know close in work just like this you know putting the lure out letting it drop to the bottom and basically just holding it in that zone and just you know just giving it the tiniest of movements and at the minute I'm using the, one of the ultra UV floating creatures which, because they float, it, it keeps the lure up in the water so it's not constantly sinking, so you can just impart that tiny bit of action to it. So another great technique is uh, just to work your own edge, really, with a drop shot, so you're not really casting far, you're not really casting at all, so you're just dropping it right in the edge, whether you've got jetties, pontines, that sort of thing, uh, in between sort of moored boats, just working it very close, and this is all the movement that you need just to get the lure going just to give it the tiniest bit of action, just to make the fish aware that there is a, a bait in the area. And often you don't need to do anything at all, especially if you're on a river where you've got a bit of flow, you've got a bit of an undertow, you can literally just keep it as, as still 
in between the tiniest little bits of movement and just, just keep working it along that edge. If you're not getting bite straight away, just keep it sort of moving until you've worked that area. So that's it, that's the end of my uh, session. We've had a few perch, it's been great fun on the drop shot. Um, for those of you guys wondering what the, what the kit is, what the setup is, so I'll just talk you through uh, what I've been using today. Um, I've got the Terminator drop shot rod, which is the seven foot 10, uh, four to 17 gram. We have got a brilliant selection of drop shot rods, so whatever budget you'll, you've got available to spend on a drop shot rod, we've got one in the Warrior range, all the way through to the Terminator range. Um, Again, these, these are specifically tuned for drop shot fishing, uh, so that you know, the tips and the action is, of them is, is tuned for that purpose. So you know, I would recommend getting a drop shot rod if you are gonna be doing that sort of more consistently. Um, again, net-wise, I've been using the, the Street Fighter net, which is the, uh, the flip net that it's very lightweight, very compact. Uh, you can walk around with that attached to your bag all day long and you know, not really feel it. Yeah, just keeping things compact, you know, all, all my lures that I need in a, in a box or in, in the case of the ultra UV floating lures in, in their packs and that's pretty much the setup that I, uh, that I need for a great day's drop shot fishing. Hope you guys enjoy and uh, keep catching.